Most, if not all, killers are cold-hearted, evil, wicked, pathetic people. But when they come to court and learn that they're sentenced to death penalties, they elicit all forms of reactions. While some of them maintain a calmness that is so upsetting, others do show some remorse, and yet others even laugh with the judge. For what reason? I have no idea. In this video, we'll see the reaction to the most violent killers to the death penalty. This is TJ Lane. The 18-year-old has appeared in court today to receive his sentence after entering guilty pleas to the murders of three high school students and the injuries of three more at Chardon High School in Ohio. Lane attended Chardon High School formerly, but due to behavioral problems, he was transferred to Lake Academy Alternative School. High school, we had shots fired, guns shot, multiple gunshots. On the morning of the attack, Lane armed himself with a knife and a 22 caliber handgun, which he used to open fire in the Chardon High School cafeteria, killing Daniel Permator, Demetrius Hewlin, and Russell King Jr. Also injured in the shooting were Nicholas Walzak, Nate Mueller, and Joey Rickers. Upon entering the courtroom, Lane displays his disdain and lack of remorse by unbuttoning his shirt to expose his t-shirt, written killer. He sits smugly next to his defense lawyer, smirking as the relatives of his victims deliver their impact statements. He will never ever be in my thoughts after this. Never. My family will move on, not you. You have ruined your life, not to mention Adam's. You're evil. Of his life. The way I will suffer the rest of my life without Danny. You're really lucky there's so many police in this room right now. You could smile all you want. Holly Walzak, the victim's mother, uses very strong words in response to Lane's disrespect, but Lane doesn't even stir in his seat. The judge then gives Lane the chance to address the court. Knowing that his client's ruthless nature is likely to stoke the flames even more, Lane's lawyer attempts to dissuade Lane from saying anything. However, the merciless murderer remains unfazed. What follows will astound you. There are gaps throughout the courtroom. Everyone present is taken aback by how obscene Lane's recent remarks are. Even his attorney is visibly shaken. Lane is not eligible for the death penalty because he was just 17 years old at the time of the offenses. Judge David Fury gives him a life sentence without the possibility of parole, making sure that this vicious murderer will never have the opportunity to hurt another innocent person. While TJ Lane didn't have an ounce of remorse for his actions, the same can't be said for Ashford Thompson. Ashford Thompson, 25, is being sentenced at the Summit County Courthouse on a charge of one count of aggravated murder of Twinsburg police officer Joshua Mkhitaryan. In the early hours of July 13, 2008, Ashford Thompson was stopped due to playing loud music in his car. After the policeman had secured a handcuff around one of Thompson's wrists, Thompson took a gun from his pocket and fired four close-range shots in the officer's head. Thompson then went ahead and leaned over the victim's body, shooting the officer three more times in the head. Thompson maintained a composed demeanor throughout the trial, even as the victim's relatives gave their impact statements. But when he heard he was sentenced to death, you have to see his reaction. Just, just execute me there because I can't get any kind of justice. I'm tired. I'm about to end up my bro. Maybe you should have thought about that before shooting Ashford. Well, Ashford's actions were truly wicked. They pale in comparison to those of Joseph McAlpin, and even worse, his reaction in court. Back in Cleveland, Ohio, we have front row seats for the arraignment of 31-year-old Joseph McAlpin. He was found guilty on 11 counts, including two counts of aggravated murder resulting from a fatal robbery. In April 2017, McAlpin was found guilty of killing Trina Tamola, 46, and Michael Kuznick, 50, and their dog at their married couple's East 185th Street Auto Store. The couple's son discovered their bodies later that evening. They have both suffered fatal head wounds from gunshots. There were also reports of cash and many cars being stolen from the car dealership. After around 30 minutes of deliberation, the jury recommended the sentence of the death penalty, and Judge Corrigan followed their recommendation. The court's going to proceed to impose sentence at this time. With regard to count number one, the aggravated murder of Trina Tamola Kuznick, the court's going to impose a sentence of death, plus three years on firearm specification. Count number two for the aggravated murder of Michael Kuznick, death, plus three years on the firearm specification. McAlpin was given the death penalty, yet he remained composed and unfazed throughout the sentencing, even licking his lips at some point. To top it off, after the sentencing, he was even exchanging laughs with the judge. You are indigent. Yes, we have gas 
Okay. The trial court imposed the death penalty and an additional 63 years in non-death penalty related offenses, which seemed like nothing to McAlpin, a reaction very similar to Michael Brady's. Michael Brady, a 30-year-old, was serving a 24-year prison sentence for shooting a North Carolina highway patrolman four times in 2013. Four years into his term, Michael and three other prisoners trying to break out of Poscatank Correctional Institution in North Carolina where they were serving their sentences, leading to the deaths of four prison staff members. This surveillance footage covers Brady and his three accomplices just moments before they would begin to attempt breaking out. Having worked in a sewing plant in the prison, Brady had access to various weapons such as scissors and hammers. Brady can be seen handing over a pair of scissors to his accomplice in this footage. A short while later, Brady is then seen following a guard to the back of the prison. We see Brady's clothing soaked in blood when they reappear in the frame. They would attack again in a matter of moments. I'm on one. What is the address of your emergency? Uh, Pastor Tank uh, Correctional Institution. We need you guys here right now. Okay. They beat them with stabbing with scissors. They, they beat them with hammers and stabbed them with scissors. It was at this point that the prisoners would try to run. Security cameras caught the moment as the prisoners tried to scale the barbed wire fence around the prison before they were stopped by armed guards. After the arrest, Brady would be seen with barbed wire cuts all over his body and tears running down his face. Brady offered some explanation for why it occurred, expressing his frustration with the legal system. During his trial, prosecutors would contend Brady was the operation's mastermind. We know who originated the plan. We know who led the plan. We know who put the actions in place to further to the plan. As they talked about the murder he had planned and carried out, Brady remained indifferent. That man, Michael Brady, beat that man, George Midget like he was trying to bust concrete. He then took the stand. Peter, I'm, I'm up here to tell the truth. You can ask me anything you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell the truth. How it was, whether it hurts me, whether it helps me. I don't care about that. And now to his sentencing. And sir, you don't believe you're crazy, do you? No, I don't think I'm crazy, no. Brady remained emotionless even as he was given the death penalty. And if you're shocked by that, then you haven't yet seen the case of Glanville Ritchie. Felicia Williams, a nine-year-old girl, was raped, strangled, and her body dumped off the Howard Franklin Bridge in Florida in 2014. Granville Ritchie, our convict, and her murderer is finally sentenced after six years of waiting. Accordingly, as to count one for the first-degree murder of Felicia Williams, the defendant Granville Ritchie is hereby sentenced to death. This is yet another heartbreaking story of a child being murdered, one that caused the victim's family great sorrow. One by one, the family members testified in court about the restless nights they endured after nine-year-old Felicia Williams was raped and killed by Glanville Ritchie. First, her grandmother. I just miss my grandbaby. Her sister. She meant the world to us, and he discarded her like she was nothing. Her mother. 2,310 days for this day to come. Felicia Demerson said she wore black to bury Ritchie today. I don't want no revenge. I gave him my God. Even the judge was unable to hold back her tears. Physically painful and psychologically tortured, torturous death at the hands of the defendant. But one of the most remarkable moments came from the victim's father. I forgive you, bro. That's how strong my God is. I come in smile at you today with no harm or ill wills towards you. You my brother. You made a mistake. But you got time. You got time to get right with God, bro. He told Richie that he had to answer to a higher power. However, this horrible crime had a deep impact on the judge, who found it difficult to contain her tears. Glanville remained painfully emotionless even after knowing he was in for the death penalty. Do you think these sentences fit the crimes? Let us know in the comments.